I'm Gabby Lamb. And I'm Harper Rose Drummond. And you're You're listening to to Tea Time, Time. where we talk about the nastiest, dirtiest, naughtiest, wildest secrets. Enjoy. Are we rolling? Welcome back to another episode of Tea Time with your host, Harper Rose, me, Drummond. And also me, as in very much legally me, Gabby Allen Lamb, me. Gabrielle Allen Lamb. (laughs) Yes. Harper Dash Rose Drummond. Yes. And those are our names and that is who we are. And thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much. Okay, actually, today is a cute ass day. Lee hates when we do that, so we're gonna do that even more. Every time, I mean, every single time. People think it's awkward. Guess what? It's not fucking awkward. It's not awkward. It's, it's actually fun. cute. Um, Makes me laugh. I am. I am. Actually, it's a priv- whoa. It's a privilege uh, actually to be in the presence of Harper Rose Drummond. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. What? <laughs> okay. 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 Oh, so it's not. Uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, what's uh what's going on, Miss Tits? Okay. Um. It's my honking birthday. Your honking birthday's on the fifth. Yeah, but it's mm, we're it's your birthday right week. It's so my give birthday it up week. For Miss Sydney Sweeney this tits is over here. Come out the day after your birthday. Yeah, gorgeous. We yeah, love to see so it. So perfect. wish with wish Miss fucking whatever titty over here happy birthday. Yeah, and here's cool. the thing. Lee got me a cute <laughs> present and a card. Oh my god! And it's just a drawing of a dick. Lee, what the fuck? No, it's actually really cute. I got it done. Read it out loud. It says, Harper, if I could motorboat you on this podcast right now, I would. (laughs) I would like to professionally motorboat you. But instead, here is the... (laughs) Happy birthday, Harper Rose. I hope this crystal helps you express yourself in a fulfilling way with love, Lee. Little, little, little. Thank you, Lee. That's really sweet, Lee. That's really sweet. Orca agate? Agate? Yeah. Yeah. Orca agate. Orca agate! Okay. The fuck is that? I hope we're saying it right. (laughs) The fuck is an orca agate? You'll see. You're about to see it. Uh oh. Oh. It's a rock. <laughs> okay. Wait. Oh my god, Lee. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh my big, god. This big, is really gorge. It's a big whale rock. What does a whale rock mean? It's just orca agate. It's like it. It has all the. It has the properties r- written in the thing in the card. That's a gorgeous rock. Okay, yeah. it honestly does. I like that you said it's just orca agate, as if I would understand that time. <laughs> yeah, be yeah, like, oh, yeah, it's yeah, just orca it's agate. Orca ag- okay, I, I can't even say my, it. My, my crystal girl. Shout out to my crystal girl. Boom chakra laka. Shout out to her. Okay, shout out to that's her. a name. And this uh, is cute. And, this that's really cute. Yeah, it's fucking cute. And, when it's cute, it's fucking cute. So don't talk to me for the rest of the episode. <laughs> This is really sweet, Lee. That's really fucking sweet. Thank you so much, Lee. You're welcome. I'm going to read all about it. I love after. giving gifts. So Do you? I really do, I'm yeah. I'm so bad at giving gifts. I'm fucking... I'm so good at it. It's uh, honestly... You've never given me a gift. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> I've given you plenty of gifts. <laughs> Those are my shoes. Part of my birthday week is I just go into Gabby's closet and I just kind of take whatever I want. <laughs> and this week's shopping adventure included Gabby's um, white shoes. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so we're going to try and do just a little 10 minute catch up right now just to get you guys in the mood, lube y'all up, and we'll get into the virginity stories. What's a, what's a good catch up for you this week? <laughs> okay, first off, I just have to say I think it's really funny because I feel like that's what we were doing. And then you're like, and we are going now. <laughs> and and now we are gonna be talking now. Yeah. And, and we are gonna be conversing and it is begins yeah. now. It starts now. Okay. Um well, oh my god. So some pretty big news. And I mean big news. I um kissed two of my friends back to back. Oh. Yeah. One on a Wednesday night, one on a Thursday night. Big kiss week for you. Big kiss week. Uh, wow. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I just had a seizure. It's okay. Um, yeah, so that was my week. Was that the big news? That's I mean, that's kind of technically two big pieces of so news. So she's out fucking slopping Not fucking, around just just smooching friends smooching friends you're so weird harper's always like i kiss my friends i'm like Who the fuck kisses because <laughs> i don't want to kiss a stranger well, guess what? they're not your friends then yes they are they're not my best friends i don't kiss my best yes, friends yes you do well one of them <laughs> um <laughs> i'm such a fucking weirdo i could never do that well you don't even like hugs I really don't. You give off big don't fucking kiss me vibes. I do give off big fucking don't kiss me vibes. Like you would be married and I feel like you would have kids without even kissing. <sighs> if I could. Why I did would. I just say married? You don't have to be married to have kids. If, yeah, well, you do. 
If you're, well, if you want to get into heaven, if you want to, if you want to do things the right way, then you yeah. have to be married to have kids. <laughs> you so, idiot. So have fun in hell, guys that had kids before marriage. <laughs> hey, I'm looking at you, my brother Garrett. Oh, sin. Center. Okay, here's the thing. My cousin had two kids out of wedlock and two kids in wedlock. So what, where's she going? Hell. <laughs> That's fucking right. Hell. Well, because she tried to repent for her sins, but sorry, it's too big of a sin. Are the kids out of wedlock going to hell as well? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Okay, good. I they was are. trying to see um, if you were going to hell, but you answered correctly, so you're going to heaven. Yeah, well, but my mom got pregnant with me before she got married, but hell. I was born <laughs> in... <laughs> In wed. Then you can have, you have a two week vacation pass in heaven. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Huh. I, uh, <laughs> just, my brain just flatlined. Well, here's the thing. Do you have anything cute to say? Let's see. Do I have anything cute to say? Go. Okay. I spent the week in North Carolina, met my boyfriend's parents. That was very sweet. Very, very sweet. Um, in Charlotte, in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was fun. We had fun shows there. The last show of the five, I kind of didn't do as well as I would have liked. That's okay. We keep it moving. Um, one out of five, the one out of five. Yeah. You know, met his parents. That was sweet. I already said that. Um, (laughs) that's really about it. Okay. I love that. Yeah. Oh my God. Our, okay. This is like actual, like something cute. Okay. But, um, okay. So I don't know if you guys heard, but I am putting on my own show April 2nd at the yard, uh, theater on Melrose and honky's on it. I'm on it. We have a bunch of cute people on it. Um, but I was posting about it yesterday and honk posted it and we are halfway sold out now. So well, oh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. so choke and so gag guys, me go. put a jawbreaker in my mouth duct tape my head put me in a trunk drive me out to arizona dump me in the desert because i'm fucking excited wow now that just had me fucking <laughs> laughing whatever you just did right now just had me fucking laughing here's the thing honk and i i feel like we're like numb to what you and i say so we'll just be like oh that's funny and then just keep it moving so i went to a comedy central taping yesterday because they're doing these like comedy central mini series whatever things for how long were the sets eight minutes okay gag. um and so i went to support my friend they had like six comics on this lineup and they're filming you know and like fucking great cameras blah 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 for this digital series and watching stand up as an audience member is a weird sensation and when I tell you I didn't laugh or smile at a single comedian <laughs> and those cameras. Not you dragging. <laughs> yeah, nothing, well, it has something to do with them. Also something to do with me. I can't be cracked. Uh, so they have all these like fucking 4K cameras and the entire thing. It's just me going sitting there like this. Did you have your own camera? There, uh, Gabby brought her own. No, no, no. You brought your own. You you say you so you told the camera guys hey all of them and there was like a lot there was a fucking lot you go hey 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 um, I know you guys are capturing the audience and the comics and ah, that's mm-hmm. great um, but I want you to capture something real so get a real your, audience reaction yeah and this was it so you're just picture in picture the whole time yeah like a YouTube reaction yeah you love it exactly mm-hmm. okay. yeah. and the comedians are up there fucking busting their balls trying to make us laugh and here I am stone cold thinking thinking I could do that better. <laughs> I could tell your story better. Mm-hmm. It's so funny. You think, I don't know if you have this, but every time I watch comedy, I'm like, I could fucking, I could win this room. I could do that, blow everyone out of the water. And then I get on stage and I bomb and I'm like, huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just one of those nights and we all have them, all of us. So. Uh, <laughs> last night, my friend Brittany, who was on the Comedy Central thing, who I went to see, she was like, you're such an interesting comic because either you fucking crush like a headliner. She's like, you are like that good where you bomb and there's no in between for mm-hmm. you. And I was like, hmm. But I think it's because you are like, we were talking about this like last night. Cause it's like, there are comics who have their style is like strict. It's like just the joke, which is, you know, that's great. But it's like, you have like just strict, it's like joke writing or you have uh, personality comics where it's like the jokes, but then also you need, you got your personality to like, kind of like carry you through. Uh huh. I, uh, I've never written a joke in my life. <laughs> And I fear for them. if I ever um, if I ever have to record like an album and it's like album only, I feel like it wouldn't be funny because you have to watch me to have it be funny. Like what I say isn't funny. <laughs> Shut up. But what I do is funny. You know well, what I mean? Well, I, well, okay. So for a long time, honestly, up until I would say the end of 2021, 
I've been doing stand up for over f- five years. About, about yeah, and you're I you, you're one year less than me. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm a year behind you. And um, I feel like up until just end of 2021 in this year, I finally realized who I am. <laughs> and I feel like, cause I always wanted to be like one of those like tight joke comics. And I kind of just had to realize I'm like, Oh no, I think I'm a, like a personality comic. Like yeah. I'm very big on stage and animated. Which is, and it's funny that like, I hate that we're talking about stand up right now. We'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. It's so boring. Sorry, you guys, this is really it's okay. We had we had to, like we had to it. fucking address Dorito Gate last episode. So yeah, that's true. And we have a bunch of fucking fucked up virginity stories. So I guess we'll talk about our boring a lot of real rape. <laughs> yeah, a lot of rape. I see. I didn't have any rapies on mine, so you got all the rapes. Yeah, which actually makes me suspicious. Why do I have to be the? I, I think this is my punishment for you thinking I stole the Doritos. You just send me all the fucking raperonies so that I have to read them out. Trigger don't, warning. Literally, don't fucking say <laughs> think. That you stole the burritos. I know the burritos, the Doritos. Because <laughs> she doesn't I know, even know what we're talking about. I no. know that you no, stole the I Doritos. No, I didn't. I didn't. And you want to know what? I threatened someone on Twitter because they started trying to make little fucking jokes on Because on my you ass. fucking stole them. Nobody no, else did. No, I didn't, Gabby. Fuck off. I didn't fucking steal any of your dirty ass fucking stupid ass chips. She stole the fucking chips. No, I didn't. You're, you're not even looking at me in the eye. She stole Put, the chips. Take your stubby finger. Shut up your ass. It's a really big finger. I have gigantic hands. No, I have ET fingers. I'm like a big thick. knuckle. Look how thick mine are. Yeah, they're like, yours are like little bratwursts. And then mine's like ET phone home. They're not lit, but mine aren't like short and fat. They're not chode they, Yeah, you, no, they are very short. Put it up. <laughs> put it up. They're not, what do you mean very short? Put, they're it, not, put it up to mine. It's the same exact size. No, no it's not. Mine look was at, very, and then she, she tried to put her hand like up in the middle here. Yeah. No. Yeah, she totally she did. did. Yeah, she put her hand totally right here did. to make it like this much bigger. No, here's the thing. Did you see that? Yeah. She no. went like this. Okay, this is this is this is my hand. This is her hand. Yeah. She went like she this. Came at you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wait, but I was shaky. Do it again. You're doing the same thing, Gabby. No, I'm not. Are, is, her, is her hand actually bigger than mine? They're the same exact size. Look at her fingertips no, she, are over she's, mine. She's squeaky. She's squeaky. But look how but you look how girthy. I know, because see, then Honky are. was just David. cheating. Okay. Mine are fucking girthy. Everyone in this room's on fucking acid, so get ready for a <laughs> fucked up episode. Yeah, it is a fucked up episode. And I'm by turning, the way, yeah. I didn't take your fucking chips. It's just what anyway. were you gonna say before that. Who gives a fuck? I don't lead? remember. Now yeah. I'm fucking pissed. Let's go. Um <laughs> Honestly, all I know is that everyone and their mom was raped in these emails. <laughs> I swear to God. But you know what's crazy <laughs> is that, and maybe we've talked about this on this podcast before, probably, um, is that no matter who you are, there was absolutely rape somewhere along your familial line. Like the mm-hmm. reason we all exist to this day is because someone in your ancestry got fucking raped. And you know that's true. Yep. And I'm sorry that I'm throwing around the R word so hard, but if you listen to this podcast, you should be ready. <laughs> Look, Last episode, we shamed a guy for not being a good enough bulimic. So if you think we're not going <laughs> to fucking go in on these rape stories. Yeah. You're wrong. You're wrong. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we should. Do we want to start with yours? That's what I was going to say. Do yeah. I want to start with my own virginity losing story? Yeah. You know what? I fucking will. I'll start. Okay. I'll go in. I'll jump in. It's a real, uh, it's a real bummer. <laughs> Real bummer of a fucking virginity losing story. Rape or no rape? You know, it's debatable. Okay. Um, Kind of a gray area. I was looking looking for my diary because I wrote it down in my diary and I have the diary at me me apartment, um, but I couldn't find it this morning. Uh, But I was going into the ninth grade. It was the summer of the eighth grade. Uh, 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 uh. And I was, so I must have been 14. Yes, I was 14. And um, I lost my virginity to a guy who went by the name. Na- We've talked about this. Scotty Too Steezy. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, if Lee and I were like, oh, Scotty Too Steezy? Okay. I don't know about this. I, okay. okay, anyway, I lost my virginity to a guy named Scotty Too Steezy. If you're from Oceanside, you absolutely know who I'm talking about. Never knew how old he was. Um, no, but he was, he was an old cat. Well, he was somewhere he? between 16 and, and 42. <laughs> you could say. <laughs> um, and I remember... The first time we hooked up, before we had sex, we were at our friend Christina's house. Her parents were out of town. It was like all these fucking, you know, skater kids, like, getting fucked up at this house in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. And Scotty, I remember, was like, oh, let's go into her parents' bedroom. I was like, okay. And then he's like, will you, uh, like, let's have sex. Will you give me a blowjob? And I was like, I literally don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And he pulls out a condom, and he's like, here, just, like, 
put it on and I was like, I don't know how to do that. And then I think that he started, he definitely started to, and then the parents came home and then we all had to run out of the house. And then I remember us running down the street and he like takes a condom off and throws it into the bushes. And then when we actually had sex, fuck, what happened? We were at my house. I snuck him in. Is it morning or night? It was night. It was definitely the night. I snuck him into my house and I don't remember. It was like very much a pressured situation where he was like, you know, if like, if we don't have sex and I don't, I can't like keep seeing you. And I just was like, no, please. You know, so, you know, it's, it's bordering, you know, it wasn't like a don't fuck me. Um, I'm going to say the word wrong. It's coercion. Right. Yeah. No, so right. I very much didn't want to have sex. I was not ready to have sex. There's the thing. But it was definitely, he was like, well, you know, like you have to do this or it's. You were younger than him. There was like, even though it was like, you know, you guys are still both teens. Yeah. It was still, there's like, there's a, there's a power dynamic mm-hmm. when you date someone who's older than you. And you're desperate. It for is so attention. common. I mean, if I didn't have my, I, I think I've talked about it on here and I talked about it in my standup, but I, I was born with a, a birth defect. And mm-hmm. so I had to get surgery to open up my she had a closed pussy. I had a closed pussy. God was like, you're not being touched today, babe. Um, but and so technically I lost my virginity to a doctor. So, <laughs> but anyway, if I wouldn't have had that, then I definitely, guys would always try and pressure me, but I yeah. they physically couldn't get in. So I was like, <laughs> Looks like she's saved, sweetie. She is saved. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was my experience with Scotty. And then um, Scott, whatever the fuck his name was. Steezy. Scotty Too Steezy, his full name. Too Steezy. Too Steezy. Too Steezy. Yeah. And uh, that was how I lost my virginity. And I remember I was so horrified by it. And I felt so ashamed mm. that I like lied about it for so long. And then like the next guy I had sex with was the one I told that I lost my virginity to. But that one also wasn't very much. That also wasn't that good. Um, so you got to start somewhere, you know, you do have to start somewhere. It's funny. So for mine, that that's part of the reason I, you know, I lost mine late. I, I also lied about mine, but it, in like a different way. So I assume mm-hmm. when you say you lied, you were saying that you were a virgin to the next guy. Is that what you were saying? I told the next guy that I slept with that I was a virgin. Cause I was so ashamed of how I lost my virginity. Cause I, I knew that there was like, I, I didn't ever really want to admit that it was like rape. Cause like in a way, I felt like I felt like saying that it was rape was taking away from people who's who have actually been raped, you know? Because I was like, well, mine wasn't. It was like I wasn't, you know, like. Well, violently. as someone who has, I give you the card. Say it as much as you want. Okay, um, great. Yeah, so uh, that's how I lost my virginity. <laughs> no, but like it, it just sucks. Like when it's not. Um, I feel like especially for women, like women want to have like a, a nice sweet time. I don't know. I, but I also feel like it's uh it is so common for guys to be like, come on, come on. Come and then on, like there's it. that there's that pressure. And then I remember he said something and it like I it scared the shit out of me. I do remember this too. And I and I was so he was probably joking, but I was so young that I was like, okay, I'll do anything. He said something like if if we don't fuck the next time I see you, I swear to God, I'm going to bring a gun over. And I was like, okay, oh I, my I remember God, that. Gabby. I remember that. I remember Holy that. Shit. Yeah, man. And uh, also, I didn't know. Like, Death to any man that says that to a girl. But I don't know if he was. I just remember being like, oh, I don't give yeah. a fuck. You don't say that. Sex is already vulnerable, especially <laughs> if it's your first time. You're, you're so fucking young. 13. You're like, no, scootily do. Like, you don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. I, I cannot. I, I didn't know what to do. So then I remember I had like. If a, we don't fuck, I'll bring a gun I'm gonna over. I'm going to bring a gun over. And I was like. Good. Then you can go fuck the gun in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I didn't know that like pussies were supposed to be wet, so I got. Oh, bless you! I had no idea. What I know. Well, fuck? also, it's like yeah. who the fuck's like talking to us about this shit? Nobody. I, I didn't even know that I was supposed to come until I was like twenty three. Um, but anyway, I used a bottle of BioSilk for you know how you like put that. It's like oh my god, did that not fucking lube. burn? I don't remember. I don't remember. Bitch, but I, I had, would block that out too. I Damn. Had chronic uh, vaginal issues like all of my teenage years. Well, because you're fucking shoving up hairspray up there. Let me grease the wheel. Yeah, it's like greasing honey. the wheel with fucking bio silk, which is like a conditioner. But I bet your pubes looked fucking dope. Probably. Yeah. And then every sexual experience I had after that for a very long time was Well, that's gonna like kind of like taint you. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. But I mean, you know, um, I lost so mine. There we go. I, well, when I was still, when I, my hymen, uh, wow, when my hymen was still fucked up, I lost it too. And then I grew up in the South. I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. My, my family's not religious, but like, I definitely still had like some religious trauma just from growing up around, you know, so many religious friends and just growing up in that environment. So then I started thinking 
not a really fucked up doctor. It doesn't matter. But I, uh, <laughs> I started thinking, I'm like, oh, well maybe God made me with this fucked up pussy. So I, I should be gay. And so then I was like, okay, okay. I, I'm just, I'm lesbian. That's like, I was born to be lesbian. So then I was only sleeping with women and I slept with my first girl when I was 20. And then had to get a restraining order on her. LOL, LOL. Story for another time. And then I lost it to a guy. I met him on a Tuesday in an improv class. Shout out to Andrew. And then fucked him on a Friday. And then we dated for three years. And I didn't tell him that I lost my virginity oh, until yeah. six months later. We were just talking about it. He's like, oh, how old were you? I was like, oh, I was 22. He goes, isn't that the age you are now? And I was like, you sure is, playboy. <laughs> and then he's like, who'd you lose it to? I'm like, well, funny you should ask. It was you. You, babe. Yeah. But he's my favorite ex I've ever had. He's super dope. It's funny that you didn't tell him that. No. Well, because my whole identity up until, and granted, 20, some people like are virgins until like their 30s or 40s, um, Lee, but I just stayed <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I <laughs> give you this nice gift. <laughs> Put this up your ass. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. You probably I mean, did. No, I'm got it. Yeah, <laughs> it's very beautiful. But no, I uh, I feel. <laughs> Put this up your ass. You probably did. <laughs> Fuck. No, I, uh, what was that? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> hey, fellas, you fuck a girl and she goes, Ouch! what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> Hottest girl you've ever fucking seen in your entire life. Just like a dream, dream, dream. You fuck her. Milky titties. Milky titties, fat ass, just fucking everything you want. Perfect skin, all of it. When she comes, she goes, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and then she goes like this with her hands. She makes like yeah. kind of like, so if, for those of you that are listening, she yeah. makes like kind of like lobster hands. It goes, yeah. ooh, ooh, wee. and then she kind of starts like clomping her little lobster hands. <laughs> Fellas, Every you time. come in again or what, brother? Yeah. Every time she yeah. comes. Ooh, 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 wee, yeah, yeah. Ooh. And then she just stares at you after she's done making the noise. She stares at you and she just goes. And then, yeah, and she keeps honking her little clam hands and just just stares at you. And then the smile slowly but surely fades from her eyes and the hands just keep on clamping. Yeah. Two minutes of that straight. Yeah. You fucking. Hard. You fucking again. You, you getting rock solid again. All right. I know you are. Okay. So we didn't finish your story. You were saying uh, that. Some people are virgins until they're later, but you were a oh, virgin uh, until well, you're Yeah, what I was just saying before, I was so fucking funny, um, is that basically it's like when you are when you're a virgin later than like all of your friends or than like the rest of society, it kind of becomes your identity. And I had like so like after I had the surgery, I'd always envisioned like, OK, and it took me a long time because I was so ashamed of of this birth defect. I'm like, oh, my fucking God. And I was so embarrassed. So like I wasn't telling my parents or anything. Because also, I don't want to be like, uh, excuse me, mom, can you please pay for my pussy? Um, <laughs> but don't worry, my dad did. Uh, anyway, so uh, I just, um, it became my identity being a virgin. And and so I felt like so much pressure to to lose it. I'm like, okay, well, I need a, like now that I've waited so long, I don't want to just, just throw it away. I don't want to just like get, I, I want to like wait till I'm in a relationship. And then yeah. I kept meeting I was meeting girls. I was meeting guys. I was, you know, meeting gutter rats. And I was just like, oh, none of you guys deserve to be inside me. And then I met this nice guy, Andrew. And I was like, you know what? You are funny and harmless. And sure, we have six weeks of an improv class. I'll fuck you week one and see how it goes. And then together for three years. And it was cute. Gorgeous. I just, it's funny that we, there's such like this societal pressure with virginity <clears throat> to be like, I need to fucking lose my virginity. I need to like, it's so there's so much pressure. There's so much pressure with virginity and and with sex. And like you think it's like, I mean, at least for me, like after I for after I first had sex, I, we fucked in my apartment, and I went to go use the bathroom, and I looked at myself in the mirror, and I really truly believed that I was gonna look different. I don't know how, right. but I thought I'm like, oh my god, I finally had sex, like the thing I'd been obsessing over for years. And then I go and I look at myself in the mirror, and I was so disappointed. It was the exact same. Exact. Nothing changed. I was like, oh. I didn't come. I was just kind of like, you know, no offense to the dude, I mean, but I was just kind of like, what? Yeah. Oh, it's not even that big of a deal. It's not. I mean, and yeah, I, I yeah, personally, it, well, it's not that big of a deal. It is. Well, it's so funny because like, you know, you hear, especially like, I, well, at least the way I grew up, like my mom was always like, it's really important. It's really important to do it with someone that respects you and loves you. It's so which important. Which I would think it which, is. Which, yes. But like, I remember being younger, just being like, shut the fuck up, mom. Like, what? Yeah. Like, my friend just fucked behind a Bojangles. Like, we're fine. That's literally you know? right. <laughs> like, you know, whatever. Um, but... Then, yeah, you do get older and, like, 
honestly, now I'm, you know, I just turned 29 and I realize at least just for me, yeah, like, you know, and, and obviously everyone's different. Do you, I don't care. But just for me personally, I honestly have way more fun with sex when it is a committed thing. Yeah. And I it's just get also, more comfortable. Oh, it's nice too, that you had like a nice virginity losing experience in the way that like you were a little bit older was with somebody that like cared about you, you know, mm-hmm. I also don't think that happens with a lot of women. Mm-mm. Um, I, yeah, fuck. not in these fucking emails. <laughs> God, Jesus Christ. And not you also in the town, went through hell, the town that I'm from too. Everybody was just like, just sucking and fucking at such a young age. I remember a girl in my seventh grade class had a baby. Like everybody was just wiling out with their virginities. I remember, so the diary that I have, the diary entries, like I wrote down, like I lost my virginity yesterday. Uh, gotta say sucked pretty bad. Uh, don't really want to talk about it. Moving on. And <laughs> you know, it's bad when you don't even want to talk to yourself to about your it. own diary about it. Oh my God. Yeah. There was a lot of, there's been a few where I have to just black it out. Not because of like, um, for like consent reasons, mm-hmm. although <laughs> wish I could black those out, but I, uh, but mm-hmm. th- there's just been some where it's like, I am consenting to this and granted it's not virginity. It's just like sex, but it's like, there's been a few experiences I've had that are just, they make me recoil. It just oh, disgusts God. me. And it's like, I consented. Everything was fine. But like, it's like in the moment it's, you ever like dissociate while you're fucking, I don't know. So I'm like, do when I, I don't want to do <laughs> If you're a woman, then I've had a that's lot. part of the deal. Ow. Oh my God. I've had so much sex with so many fucking gross guys. And it's like all of those experiences were just, you know, my eyes just rolling into the back of my head. Like, can we just end this please? Something that my therapist and I are working on right now is like, I have a people pleasing thing and it definitely comes out like sexually. And so then I'll be like, oh, yeah, like the worst. I need to have, and at first I'm like, I just really like sex. And I'm like, oh yeah. no, it's like, I'm addicted to that validation. And so th- it's like, I really want to have sex because I really want to get that validation. Mm-hmm. But then once we're doing it, I'm just kind of like, no, this isn't actually what I want. <laughs> I, yeah. I remember like being so much, you know, when like I was a teenager up until like my mid twenties, just being like, I fucking love sex. I'm just a horny girl who just wants to fuck. And then I grew up and realized like, oh no, that was just like my people pleasing persona. No, you're just a like, sweet girl who wants love. Yeah. And now I'm like in a sweet loving relationship and I'm like, oh, I've done a horny girl. Shout out to all the guys that treat your your women, your dudes, your your they thems, whatever the fuck, with <laughs> with respect. Because yeah. honestly, I'm really proud to say that like all my best friends right now are with dudes that I really like sign off on. Mm-hmm. And that's really great to see. It took 30 years of eating <laughs> a lot of we shit. We made it. I had the most sex in my teenage years, probably from 14 to 23 is when I was absolutely just fucking my tits off. God, see, I would be so, I mean, I used to be so fucking jealous of all my friends that were doing that. I was like, why was I born a freak? Get me out. Put me in coach. No, I wanted it uh, so fucking bad. <laughs> I wish, I wish my number count was like five. You know, I wish I was a lot low I, and it doesn't matter at the end of the day, like, who gives a fuck, but I'd like, I do. I, in retrospect, I'm like, man, out of everybody I've had sex with, maybe four of them were worth it. <laughs> out of the fucking 42 Pretty high number. that I've had sex Pretty with. Pretty high number. I, um, it's so funny. I, I, when, you know, in that first relationship I was with the dude, I was, it was really hard for me to get over my, my jealousy because, and almost anyone that I get with their number is like 10 times out of 10 higher than mine. Guys but, are always, yeah. Always so much higher than mine. But something that, um, that my, um, my favorite ex had pointed out was that he was like, what's the difference between fucking a hundred people and fucking someone a hundred times? You're still having sex. And at the end of the day, we're choosing to be with each other. So your past doesn't, you know, it made you who you are and that's great. But we also grew up in a time where there was so much stigma around women who like fucked a bunch of guys. And Mm -hmm. I don't think it obviously doesn't fucking matter anymore, but it sucks that like, that was such like, it was like a fucking scarlet letter for women, you know, to like, have fucked more than two guys. Like, oh, ew. Yeah. I remember, like, the guy, I think I've talked about this on here, I'm not sure, but one of the guys that I was sleeping with when I was 15, and he was 22. Previous to him, my other boyfriend or guy I was seeing was also 22, I was 15. And the second guy that I had seen was like, oh, you, like, fucked, like, those guys? Like, you kind of been ran through. Like, you're not as pure as I thought you were. And I was like, huh? 
Uh, meanwhile, you're this, not as pure as I thought you were. And, and, and the guy and the guy getting mad over how pure you are is probably like fucking his sock with like fucking crumbs at the bottom and making a fucking ima- like paper mache out of it. Imagine being 22 and looking at a 15 year old and saying you're not as pure as I thought. Oh, my you God. Were. And but in the time, I didn't know. You know, at the time I was like, oh, man, he's right. And now I look back and I'm like, no, you want to talk Whoa. about rape. That, technically, that's that's statch, brother. Like, get the fuck out uh, of yeah, here. It was a wild. OK, so anyway, should we get into it? You want to start? Or you want me to start? I'll start this time. Okay. Okay. I really, this one made me hoot when I read it aloud this morning. Um, I was around 17 when I finally decided to let my ugly toad of a boyfriend fuck me. (laughs) 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 He was spending the night during a thunderstorm and around midnight, we lost power. We lit some candles and laid down on my bed for a while making out while he squeezed my tits like stress balls. It was annoying and not pleasurable. So I decided to let him smash just so he would leave my goddamn tits alone. Fuck. (laughs) Been there, sister. Oh, my God. The power was out. The the hell else were we going to do anyways? So he slides his weenie in. (laughs) And he was of average size, six, six inches or so. It didn't hurt at all, and it was pretty all right, dot, 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 until he came. He started grunting like a baby that was shitting his diaper. (laughs) No. Very much, yes. (laughs) Oh, my God. He's the one that makes those noises. (laughs) Oh, my God. Now, listen, if a girl does it, that's kind of funny. But if a guy does it, like, I'm going to send in a hound or something. Okay, so he's shitting and grunting like a baby. Yeah, so he's going... Uh, (laughs) Wait, fuck off. Okay, wait, you guys, I'm going to back up. He started grunting like a baby (laughs) that was shitting his diaper. (laughs) (laughs) How did I do that? As he was about to come. And when he did, he farted at the same time. Yes. Bitch, that's what we want to hear. Yes. Hey, hey, fellas, if you're not farting when you come, you're boring. Is that the whole story? No, very much no. Oh, gorgeous. It wasn't even an impressive fart. Just a tiny squeaker of a fart that got high pitched at the end. Not her wanting the fart to be bigger. I mean, fart (laughs) fart like a man, if you're going to do it. Yeah, Um, okay. Uh a, t- a tiny squeaker of a fart that got high pitched at the end. It was as if his fart was asking a question, like what? it was asking me if I came. <laughs> That's so funny. I did not come, but I pissed on him a few times and pre- <laughs> and pretended like I was squirting because I had seen that in porn. What? Squirt is 100% pee, by the way. It irritates me to this day. This, the age old wait, argument. Wait, wait. Squirt is 100% pee, by the way. It irritates me to this day that men can't just say they're into piss play. Like there's no magical fourth pussy hole that uh, that stores lady cum. It's piss. The end. Okay, that was a fucking roller coaster. An For, icon. First of all, the debate between is squirt pee or it cum? Is, it's pee. Then you hear women who are like, no, it's not. Well, that's because they're embarrassed. Huh? If you're squirting, you're pissing. It's okay. The fart, all of it. That sounds like a nightmare. Also, I love not the fucking fart. Honestly. Honk my tits for 15 hours like a fucking horn before you fucking blow your ass particles in my fucking bed. It reminds me of the last, the like the pity titty one where she's it, just it, like, yeah. fuck it, just fucking do it. Whatever you're doing is miserable. Just fuck me, I guess. So many women have sex just to like Out of get, desperation. Yeah, not even like, desperation for the guy, desperation to For just, themselves, to get it to, over to with. To get whatever fucking nightmare of a situation <laughs> is going on over with. Because all the, y'all just stay oh. falling asleep after after sex. Yeah, God. The women, fa- they round seven, round eight. It's like, Ned, it's time for you to go to bed, but it, it's God damn it. And the fact he's like squeezing her tits and she's like, please, all right, just fuck me. Get it over with. This is so awful. <laughs> At least you'll stop squeezing my tits after you come. Ew. And then he fucking, ew. That's the type of guy though. If you're going to fart when you come, it's like, I bet like your cum just like kind of like dribbles. It yeah, doesn't ew. even like, it doesn't like shoot out. And it comes kinda out kind of like, green. His, his cum like kind of like tips to, stop. tiptoes out. Stop. <laughs> Not cum shame. <laughs> Yeah, come shame. Do yeah, it. Yeah, here's the thing. Fucking Men need to be come. Sh- yes. They're always like, you want to suck my dick? You want to take my load? I'm like, your load? You mean your liquefied baked beans or whatever the fuck is coming Not out of your, your putrid li- body? <laughs> you disgusting shrivel cunt. <laughs> come I, ropes, I, you bitch. I have, I have a whole fucking... <laughs> Literally, throw a fucking rope at me. Don't go like, oh, I came. Okay, put it back in. I think if your cum is pathetic, it should go back into your body. Yeah, just suck it up. Suck it on up. 
<laughs> this is hitting home with Lee and I'm getting scared. My, <laughs> my favorite thing is also like when, when guys see discharge in your underwear and they're like, is that cum? And you're like, no, it's, yeah. it's, a fu- it's fucking a yeast infection. Yeah. Oh, I wish it was cum. But guess what? No. You, fu- you fucking ate. I got a sweaty fucking pussy, okay? Whatever yeah. you're seeing in my undies, that little crusty white shit, that's not cum, babe. Also, guys are always like, it's so hard to make her cum. Uh, hey, guess what? We can make ourselves cum in 30 seconds. I can and make that's taking a long seconds. time. Huh? I can make myself cum. One second. Literally. I'm coming right now. I, if I just fast. think. That's how easy it is. Just came. And hey, yeah. guess what? Yeah. Just did it again. So don't ever talk <laughs> hey, to me. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, but Gabby. Came. That was a long one. That was a long one. <laughs> and this is a this is a tip for all the this is a tip for all the ladies because you know we do have a lot of um, young female listeners and so this is, this is a tip for the ladies. Uh, I just want you guys to know uh, next time you have sex with a guy, really try out the um, the lobster claw um, clam yeah hand yes. clamping trip yes trick rather yes and uh, try it s- see what he does especially or, with a guy that's really with a guy that's really bad in bed. Be careful with doing it with the lady though because the ladies are gonna love it. Okay go. okay <laughs> next one. <laughs> All right. I'm from a small town, so my options for guys, very limited. They called me Virgin Mary in high school, but honestly, I was trying to have sex. Pickings were slim. Anyway, at the time, I'm almost 20, currently 28, so I was like, fuck, I can't be 20 and be a virgin. I'm just going to fucking get it out of the way. This was in 2013, so, like, this guy had been hitting on me on Facebook DMs (laughs) I've known since middle school, and I was like, He's my mark. Ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so I decided to have sex with him. On like the second date, he was very mechanical. But he wasn't a virgin. So I was like, I guess was. this is how it is. Uh, I think he was gay. Because <laughs> immediately after we finished, he rolled over and he was like, I think I'm gay. <laughs> How did you piece that together, girl? Uh, Yeah, I think he was gay. And then he rolled over and said, "Uh, I think I'm gay. I was like, what kind of game is he playing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was like, "Um, okay, that's cool. Then he said, I'm not a faggot. Ha ha. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, (laughs) I'm going to run that back. Then he said, I'm not a faggot. Ha ha. She just wanted to say the word again. Yeah, I did. (laughs) And was like, and was like, ha 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 ha. No cuddling. Then he left. I was like, wow, I really wasn't. cuddling's gay, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really wasn't missing out this entire time, LOL. This guy had to be gay, though, because one time we were driving together, and out of nowhere, he was like, I don't eat pussy. And because I hadn't been ate out, I was like, oh, okay, cool. (laughs) The second guy I had sex with was... I was digmatized by, but looking back, it's probably just because he actually liked women, so the sex was automatically better, LOL. Nothing wrong with gay men, by the way. I don't know. Just don't have sex with women, LOL. Or if you do, act like you want to be there. Ha 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 Anyway, cheerio. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I just... She's unhinged. I'm obsessed. But okay, I like the when you're driving and he says, I don't eat pussy. Well, guess what, honey? A lot of straight men don't. That's the other, that's the other godforsaken fucking truth. God, we had like a huge ass debate one night over the summer, last summer with um, one of our friends who was like, no, I don't eat it and I don't like it. And we were like, okay, but here's the thing. Do you a think, lot of do guys you, don't. Well, okay. Uh, do you think a lot of women are like, I love slurping and gobbling dick. Mm. But it's like, you know, what, whether you like it or not, I think it's like you should prioritize um, pleasing your partner. I don't care if they're your partner for an hour or for a year or whatever it is. You should like sex, like pleasing someone in bed is important. It should be anyway. I ain't going one to. Um, hey, but, by the way, and also not in the car. I'm so tired of guys. Hey, by the way, I don't eat pussy. So uh, do you want uh, sushi or pizza tonight? By the way, I don't eat pussy. Oh, oh, oh hey. A little quick break. Just got a news update that I couldn't ignore. Yeah. Mom's discovery of son's severed head in bucket leads to murder charge for Wisconsin woman. A mother's horrific discovery of her son's severed head in a bucket in the basement of her home has led to the murder charges against a Wisconsin woman. Her, of course, it's in Wisconsin. Okay, but so... Oh, the wait. mom found that's her son's head. Yes. She, okay. Uh, they found. They found. They the, found her son's head in a bucket that they're saying she put there. No, the mom found the son's head. Oh. The suspect is a 24-year-old Taylor Shabin business. Oh. Allegedly told officers 
That is a good question. Before describing a day spent with the victim smoking meth and then engaging in sex that turned violent. Nice. I wonder okay. who did it. Bit of a wonder who did it. Okay, man. Right. The mom. Okay, Lee. Do you think the mom fucked the son and then chopped his head off? Yep. Nice. Okay. okay. All right, Honk, you on to the a next? A lot of fan theories. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I still can't. I think he was gay. He then said, I'm gay. <laughs> yeah. I think he was gay. And that's on guys will literally show you that they're not interested in you. And women will still be like, I don't know. <laughs> what is he playing? And it's then, like, yeah, he doesn't like you. boo. Okay. And then also him being like, but I'm not a faggot. <laughs> I think I'm gay, but I'm not a faggot. What does that mean? It's like, well, you better be if you're going to be slinging that word around. He's ashamed. Yeah, it's giving, it's giving it's Nate giving, Jacobs. It's giving, it's giving self-hatred and it's giving, I hope you are getting slammed and also providing some slam now um, to the genders of your choice. Okay. Hey, honks. First time writing in. Long time listener. So here's how I lost Yay. minds. Tune of the intro to Britney Spears' song, Lucky. Uh, boom, this, doom, boom, doom, boom, doom, boom, doom, boom, doom. Okay, keep reading. I'm going to sing it. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. This is a story about a girl in my space. She was 13. She shaved her arms, not just the pits, the whole damn arm. She wakes up. There you go. Knock, knock, knock. Okay, so I was 13 and my cousin who was 15 going on 16. Uh, wait, okay. So let me remind that. Okay, so, okay, so I was 13 and my cousin was 15 going on 16. And she was a part of the sick punk scene in Orange County. Not it's sick, like fine. actual colds, just mm-hmm. lots of colorful patch wearing kids on high on uh, cough syrup. I would take the train up and hang with her all the time at the train station and watch the super cute skater dudes. All right, honk, this is your type. One day we were walking to a park to meet some of her buddies. And that's when I saw him, a long legged alt boy dancing, uh, dangling his legs from a tree. He had pegged. What does pegged pants mean? Wait, pause. Huh? What's pegged pants? Never, never heard of that. He had pegged pants. Does that mean like they're pants and they have like a peg, like a dildo you got on me them? Fucked up. I don't know what a fucking pegged pants is. I don't, Lee, I, let me look it up. But he's Lee, punk. you're in a hentai. What's she said pegged pants? He, she, said he's, she said he's punk, right? No, no. Lee is just in a oh. dwarf play. Okay. But oh what um, <laughs> pegged pants? Maybe it's like studded. Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay, keep going. I guess I needed to spend more time in the punk scene. Okay. Uh, uh, no, I don't know. Are, right. Are they is like it, these like clown pants? These like genie pants? Yeah, maybe. Okay, keep going. Okay, guy, 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 guy. Okay, he had pegged maybe. pants, tall docks, and a skunk mm-hmm. streak mm-hmm. in his hair. Ooh. I was in love. I was 13. He was 17. It's giving mm-hmm. baby predator. I oh, told him. Uh, that's, that was me. I added that in. Uh, I told him I was 14, almost 15, and he believed me. Uh, Wait, she told him that she was 15? Yeah. And the, we got a little sneaky girl on our hands. Yeah, we do. I, I told him I was 14, almost 15, and he believed me. Expert at eyeliner from a young age. Uh, this guy knew I was so lusting after him, so he jumped on the opportunity to rip it up. <clears throat> we went to the uh, to this infamous couch behind the dumpster at the park, sat down and made out, but his breath was so stale and stank, I avoided it as much as I could and let him give me hickeys instead. He started fingering me and was so inexperienced, he scratched the fuck out of my lips and was just not at all turning me on. But I was so into the idea of a punk boyfriend, I yeah. let him think he was a star fingerer. Yes. After a few excruciating moments, we decided to lay on the couch. He got on top of me and told me to take off my pants. Here's the dilemma I faced. This is a I'm story 13. About a girl named Lucky. We've been at a park outside for hours. I was wearing my dog piles. <laughs> These pants are are so peg legged. You need pillar or pliers to get them off. Not the peg Pe- leg. Oh, pegged pants, like skinny skinny jeans. They were skinny jeans. Okay. Why are they saying pegged though, yeah, honey? I've never heard of that. What the fuck? I'm also peg not from pants. Orange County. But I've never heard. I'm from there. I've never heard that. I know, honey. Okay. What kind of? Okay. What part of Orange County? Yeah, who knows? Okay. Because it's giving Anaheim. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've been outside for hours. I was wearing my dog piles. These pants are so straight legged. You need pliers to take them off. Um, I was wearing Converse shoes with no socks. And to top it off, I was a virgin. He laid me down and got on top of me and started to take off my pants. He got them down to my ankles, then said, oh, wait, you got to take your you got to take off your shoes. I was petrified. My feet smelled so bad. I could not allow my new crush boy to smell that foul uh, odor. She wasn't wearing socks. mm -mm. And she so she has her shirt on, no pants and her and her shoes on. Um, So. 
uh, to smell the foul odor. So I just told him to leave them on. As a result, my jeans wouldn't come off all the way and kind of hooked around my shoes, creating a kind of hog tie effect on my legs. <laughs> Not hog tie. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite person. Okay, no. Uh, he, was so <laughs> he was so determined to fuck, he grabbed my feet and pushed them towards my face, allowing uh, just enough room for him to enter on his own Wait, will. wait, hold on, hold on. But she still has the pants on? Okay, okay, okay. So the pants are like around her ankles with her shoes? Yeah, she didn't want to take her shoes off, so she she tried to take her pants off around her shoes. But the pants get stuck. stuck. So she's like tied And he did by that the thing so where like, and then he pushes her feet he back. He puts her feet, yeah. But she still has her pants on. Yeah. So she's being she is fucking hogtied. Okay, keep going. It's given hogtie. Okay, so um <laughs> This is a story about a girl named Lucky. Yeah. He was so determined to fuck, he he grabbed my feet, pushed them toward my face allowing just enough room for him to enter at his own will. I could feel the double chin forming on my neck, and this position was in no way beneficial to me. His dick was big. Like, huh? even to this day, it is the biggest dick I ever had. It's always those fucking emo skater guys. Those little skinny ones. They have the teeniest little leg. Oh, they have three legs because they have teeny little and legs and then the dicks, fucking, yeah. like, hog. Okay, um, I could so take that dick now and make him proud, but that's not the case for 13-year-old me now. I que- Okay. No. I queefed. no. Very, yeah. No. <sighs> I queefed. Honey, that's your soul leaving you. Um, He <laughs> stuck it in. I said, ow! He pulled it out. And I queefed. He stuck it back in and I queefed. She keeps queefing? Bitch, so she's what did you put? You put a balloon up there. Okay. Um, <laughs> this, no. This fool was like straight up. like a cushion. <laughs> mm -hmm. This fool was straight up shoveling buckets of air in and out of my tiny little puss puss like a coal miner. And I just laid there so stunned because I had no clue vaginas could breathe. <laughs> There's an ecosystem down there. They do a lot. Um, he finished on my belly and I laid there for like a second. Like, what the fuck do I do now? As I sat up on the couch, you guessed it. More air. I queefed no! again. No. <laughs> he was laughing at this point as we walked back. I could feel air seeping out like no! silent queefs. We walked back out. Friends. They're just and he, walking and she's queefing. And he immediately put out his fingers on... Uh, under his buddy's nose and I was mortified. That's so humiliating. What an asshole. Not sure if this is even a great story. It is. It is. Uh, but it's been, it's, it's now it's been years since I've talked about it. Love your podcast. Love your Instagram and TikToks and just plain love you all. Um, oh, Gabby, I am forever grateful I got to meet you and see you perform. I appreciate your openness about sobriety. Plus, you are genuinely funny and like-minded Pamela enthusiast to follow on social media. So cheers. A non-alcoholic beverage to you. I wonder where I saw you. Okay, that's really cute. Did she say where she saw? Mm, she sure did not. I bet I bombed. Um, hold on. Hold on. So this whole time, you... This whole time, you have your fucking... Your shoes and your pants on. Mm-hmm. And you're queefing. And, you're, and, you're, and your pussy's talking. Talk. Her pussy's doing this. Her pussy was doing that. Hold yeah. on. It, it's. And they're fucking. By the way. These fucking nasty, dirty little fucking punk kids. I was fucking on a couch. <sighs> I, I just can't. I, I got, All the germs. The, for the, they don't give a fuck. You think. God. Those kids are fucking feeder, feedering you. Fingering you with their fucking hot Cheeto fingers. Yeah. They don't, nobody gives a fuck. I, the first time I got eaten out was by a punk kid named Todd. I cannot for the life of me remember his last Not name. Not Todd. Isn't Todd. that the one you told that you were in a car accident? Yes. <laughs> I told Todd. So Todd ate me out at, way after losing my virginity, of course. Um, but I'd never been eaten out before. And he had never eaten a girl out before. So he was really pumped. And I was like, okay. And he was like a little punk kid that like fucking, you know, all those punk kids like sewed their patches on with like floss. They were very crafty. They were all very crafty and had like, like, um, fucking pins in and yeah. all of their clothes were made God, out. God, I thought they were so fucking hot in high school. Me too. Jesus, fuck. Fuck. These little skater punk kids. Anyway, I remember he ate me out and then he kind of ghosted me after that. And to get his attention, I told him that I had just been hit by a car and I was in the hospital texting him because I was in such bad condition when I was really just walking around Target with my mom. And then he wrote me back and was like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> Fairy tales. Fairy tales. <laughs> I anyway. hooked up with this guy in the valley when I was 19. I'd like just moved to LA and he, and he was like biting my clit. And then I was like, oh, oh, can you not do that? And then he's like, oh, sorry, I just did a lot of whippets tonight. Gorgeous. 
Um, I, I get it. You ready for the next one? Yeah. Also, wait, I pause really quick. Yeah. So you see how Gabby has um, food on the floor. That's the epitome of our kitchen. And I just want everyone to know. We can't see that this. Food. Okay. Well, I, okay. So you can't see it, but Gabby has a rice crispy treat on the floor of the studio right now. Oh. And I just want everyone to know this is backing up my claims from last week. Continue. <clears throat> Next. It's like a purse in between her feet. She's keeping it safe. Don't. <laughs> yeah, it's yummy down there. It's fine. It's wrapped up. Okay. All right. Ah, I'd like to tell you the story of the first time I tried <clears throat> to lose my virginity. The year was 2000, and I was in the seventh grade. Hey, girl. My eyebrows were thin as hell. Also, hey, girl. My kitty t-shirt, my kitty t-shirt popping. And my boyfriend, an eighth grader was a juggalo. Please post a picture of a juggalo mm -hmm. when we put this up. Yeah. Okay. I'm obsessed. That's right. A juggalo. <laughs> his name was Brian, and his bedroom doubled as the laundry room at his mom's house, and he covered the walls with porn. Okay, this kid was getting abused. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> Not the laundry room covered in porn because also the whole family uses the laundry room. Yeah, no, no. He was sexually abused. And it's really yeah, was. cute as like when we tell these stories as adults, be like, yeah, mm. you know, Frank used to make me go down to the dungeon. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, because Frank was getting, you know, boned by his stepdad. Because his fucking uncle was sucking his dick. It's when always he was the fucking 13. uncle. Okay. Okay. <sighs> okay. So he had a dirty mattress on the floor next to the washer and dryer. The stuff of fucking nightmares. Oh, Jesus Christ. After a few, and I love like as teenagers, we're just like, okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, after a few months of hooking up in the laundry room, we decided it was time to go all the way in the woods behind his house, of course. We went out to the woods on a legit cold winter day and basically just took off our pants. This is the, this is the fucking, mm -hmm. the tale of almost every teenager trying to fuck. You guys just take off your pants and you're like, hey, what now? Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> no foreplay. And he tried to jam his flaccid dick in me. Um. Despite his desperate attempts to get it in, it did not happen. He blamed me as only a fucking juggalo would. And we went back inside. Imagine trying to fucking cram your little flaccid fucking your little earthworm wobbly and, yeah. dick into this girl and then being like it's your fault and yeah. then you're so young so then like you internalize yeah. that you're like oh oh no and it's like no if if if, if you were a juggalette this wouldn't happen okay i decided a flaccid i decided a flaccid dick poking my labia was enough to qualify as losing my virginity so i told all of my girlfriends the deed was done it actually didn't happen until until almost a year later with the kid who had just gotten out of juvenile detention. <laughs> okay. While we watched Pink Floyd's The Wall, I was very high and his dick was very small. Mm. And I'm still not convinced juggalos can fuck. Also, quick RIP to Brian. This was a juggalo. Mm. Also a quick RIP to Brian who took his own life three years ago. Oh, I hope the hatchet man gods welcomed him with open arms. Well, that had quite the ending. Do you think he went to heaven or hell? Probably hell. Grim. What? Grim. Oh. R.E.P. Brian took his life. I mean, you know, everything that we said earlier was probably accurate. Here's the thing. Or do you think that he was just so embarrassed about still like the flaccid dick thing that he was like, I just got to end this? I mean, I gotta take myself out. Here's the thing. I don't think that was enough, but I think hmm. it had to have happened more and then he ended it. You think? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, maybe. RIP to him and sorry to his family, but mostly sorry to you because what happened to your to your, you know, pristine pussy is truly that's the sad story here. Moment of silence. And I just came. Okay. Wait. Let's go. Yeah. Wait. And I did too. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> on to the next. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you want us to get kind of, you know, really mushy about the way you consume food or what you do in your free time, whether it's taking your own life or Whatever taking someone is. to the beach and, and confessing your kinks, then you're going to need to find a different podcast because here, listen, this isn't we're fucking, non sweetie. This isn't NPR. This well, isn't. It, 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 
it almost is because I am a scientist, but it, it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> and I'm Ira Glass. And I am and Johnny this is Okay. This uh, American life. <laughs> and I just came again. Okay. After I discovered porn in middle school, I wanted to have sex so, so bad. But of course, I wanted to do it for the first time with someone I actually really liked. So the opportunity didn't present itself until I was 16. My crush and I were alone in my room and I laid on top of him and asked him if he wanted to have sex. Of course he said yes. And since it was his first time too, we both high-fived after no. for not being virgins anymore. LOL. And then a few days later, after that, I was raped by my half-brother. And a few days after that, the guy I had a crush on became my boyfriend and dealt with the aftermath of the rape with me, which was very nice of him. Oh my God. What? Was that the whole story? <laughs> yeah, so that was it. <clears throat> I have never come harder in my entire life. <laughs> here's the thing. That, here's the thing. I have never. You had that consensual harder. sex to kind of like open you up for new opportunities, but you have to be careful what you wish for because then a new darker opportunity came. She. No, no, no. That is in all seriousness. That is in all seriousness. That's horrendous. That is so fucking sorry. I, I. That is so fucking sad, and I am so fucking sorry that you went through that. Oh my fucking god. You're half. At least make it a step, brother. You're half. Oh the my The day after God. But here's That's just an interest Okay so So you lose your virginity Ugh. And like it sounds like Fun and wholesome And yeah, sweet Yeah what a great virginity Yeah that's, story. that's that's It was tender It was cute yeah, they you know? high five, Like yeah A24 would pick up The first half Absolutely No they would actually and then, Pick well, up the And then thing. Sam Levinson Would pick up the, 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 yeah, the last half Then that's H before H Season 3 HBO You know the more We go But um oh. And then the same week yeah, so you got raped and a boyfriend and your virginity lost in the same week. Girl. And thankfully, not all by the same guy. That's the silver lining. I... 16 years old. Oh, my fucking God. Uh, Are you still coming or... Kind of. I'm kind of... <laughs> yeah. I'm halfway coming and also trying to, like, register everything. Yeah, it was kind of a bomb. I... What? Here's the thing I just want you guys to know. I know we said at the beginning, but there are so like I don't even think we can get to all of them, but there are so many stories that have to do with that with with this type we of We should like, read a few more on Patreon. Okay, yeah, for, for sure. sure. No, yeah, we have so many. But okay. it is so fucking heartbreaking. Oh my god, the shit that women go through. I think most of if not all of these have been written by women. Uh, I have one from a uh, from a uh, guy. But yeah, all all women. And it's because all guys have the same virginity losing story. Yeah, I fucked her and it was, but she just laid there. Oh, oh yeah, I fucked her. And I was you want to know why she just laid there? Because she was asleep and you're a rapist. Because, <laughs> because she was crying and she was tired. Yeah, because she didn't want to and she really liked you. Oh my god. <sighs> okay, this isn't the story of how I lost my virginity, but it involves my virginity. So hopefully that's good enough to set the scene. I was 19, a virgin, and it was the full and it was the fall of my second year of university. I was seeing this girl I had pretty strong feelings for, but we weren't official. Okay, so this is a guy, I think. Uh, because we weren't official, I had no issue with the fact that she was seeing other guys. I was just happy that I got to spend time with her. I would regularly go over to her place and she would come to my place to make out, have deep conversations, and sleep together. But we didn't have sex. I figured that it would happen eventually because our connection was so strong so i didn't press the issue respectful after a while she stopped seeing other guys and we became exclusive shortly after that we had a sleepover we had a sleepover night where things were progressing more than usual and i thought we were about to have sex i was pretty pumped because i was the last of my friends to still be a virgin and i really liked this girl before things got started she paused and asked me if i was a virgin to which i responded yes then she backed up and said, I don't have sex with virgins. I was pretty confused at the time and honestly pretty hurt because I didn't know why that should matter if we liked each other. I accepted her statement and we ended up not having sex. We were still together for a while after that until she broke up with me by telling me she met someone else. Despite that, our relationship was still pretty off and on around graduation. 
I never forgot what she said about not wanting to have sex with me, and the rejection made me feel like I wasn't good enough to have sex with anyone. It made me feel extremely unwanted and only added to my feelings of of self-loathing. Thankfully, I did manage to work through it all in therapy, and I have since lost my virginity. That story is uneventful, though. Thanks for reading, and I hope that story wasn't a bummer. Um, it wasn't a bummer. No, it was really good. You know actually. the story just before that, a girl got raped by her stepbrother. And so. then the story b- before that, uh, the guy that she uh, tried to fuck uh, killed himself. So, <laughs> so don't worry. Yours in the grand was, scheme of things, I'd say pretty uplifting. Yeah, uh, at least you're in therapy. Also, at least you didn't kill yourself. It's so funny because we just talked all this shit about like women having the most traumatic sex stories, and then we have, and then this guy just came right in. Because you want to know what? Everyone on this earth needs to be humbled, even us sometimes. Um, yeah. Very rarely. Uh, also but- <laughs> interesting, the girl being like, I don't have sex with virgins. And then continue to date you? What a weird... Yeah, that's that's the thing. I've, I've heard of women saying that. I don't like that. I've had guy friends tell me that, that, that women have said, um, that, yeah, like they don't fuck virgins. I'm like, okay... Um, so weird. But, Who gives a fuck? It but just the, sounds the, like she was a virgin too and just didn't want to have sex. Maybe. I guess. I don't know. Maybe. That's what it sounds like. I don't know, but she sounds mm-hmm. like a bitch anyway. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, but, uh, but actually kind of to the point that you're saying, I kind of feel like when people do say that, it's not about you. Because again, it's like if someone really wanted to fuck you, they would do it. You know what I mean? I when people right. say shit like that, I, I like especially with like a, a reason in that vein. I feel like it's it's definitely a reflection of them. It's yeah, not, that's not that shit's not about you. No, but you can imagine how much that would have like you would. Hurt oh, of you. course. Yeah, no, if but, you're young, to oh my god. Yeah, I mean, in high school, I remember like okay, I worked at a restaurant my senior year of high school. I was the youngest, uh, yeah, the youngest person working there, and like you know, everyone's fucking. I, I'm so jealous that everyone is and someone was like oh harper what's your number and i was like 40 I just like, <laughs> they're like aren't you 17 i'm like yeah yeah i am but yeah it's 40 and i would like lie to people all the time and uh, 107 my, yeah actually uh, as of today 280 so <laughs> get in line no and then my Shut um up. my friends later on told me they're like oh harper we always knew you were lying because your stories were always like they were kind of childlike like that didn't really make sense and I'm like, oh, okay. So you guys just let me run my shit and whatever. Yeah, but called you out. Yeah, but it's just like the old bag of sand. If, yeah, the old King bag of missing Doritos. <laughs> okay, you have a floor rice crispy. I can't. Here's the thing. Okay, yeah, I guess we can just read more on Patreon. But I there's a really fucking good one. Do you want it? Then let's read, do read one the more. good one. I, yeah. I have a bunch of good ones too. But yeah, well, well, sorry guys, we're gonna have to save. If you don't subscribe to our Patreon and you send in stories, our subscribe. Patreon is five dollars, and we put and for uh, five dollars a month, right? Yeah, we give you four episode, four whole full length episodes. That's a dollar twenty five an episode. A dollar twenty. And can I just? I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk my shit really quick. We put our fucking pussies and bussies into, into those Patreon, episodes. Yeah. I fucking ate mayo last episode. Gabby ate relish. That last episode was so fucking funny. Fuck. I think that's the funniest thing anyone in this room has ever done. Um, mm-hmm. It definitely is. The sto- the digital chaos is hilarious. Like and and on top of the five dollars that you you like the episodes, the new episodes you get every week. Now we just released episode ten. This is episode. We'll be putting out episode eleven. So you have that backstock of content to listen to as well. So you get Love access it. to everything we did plus a dollar twenty five an episode. And kind of going back to like what you had said earlier when we were talking about stand up, and you were like. You were like, oh fuck, I need to be humble. Or I don't know, you or you were like, like, oh, am I, you know, talking myself up too much? I don't think you are or were. And I think that both of us can actually do a bit more of that. Cause I feel like you and I are always, I mean, we are we are very harsh with ourselves, mm-hmm. but you know, this shit's fucking funny. So I also always though get really embarrassed because I'm like, I think people think that I'm really funny online because I have a funny online presence, but then they see my stand-up and they're like, huh? I feel like it's so the same. It's I feel so like how not. you are on social media is. Lee so- saw me the one time he saw me was at that horrible little bookstore and I bombed. Okay, actually, this is really it wasn't funny. Wasn't really even a bomb. It was. It was an. It was a small show. That I. Me. It was like okay. an AA meeting. It, it, believe me that. Uh, yeah, that wasn't like a show. That I've was been, like a. I've been doing stand up for fucking seven years now, and I haven't Ooh. gotten out of fucking bookstores. So, don't. I'm not judging. I knew exactly what that show was. Oh my God. Well, it's funny because Gabby and I have talked about this too, but it's like, Lee, you've only, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've only ever seen us like do like not, not well. I think that I 
need to keep myself separate from your stand up because I don't think it's gonna the 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 two worlds are gonna mesh. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Right? Well, yeah. It also, felt, do you hear? Do you hear? He's saying we need to keep it separate because he doesn't like seeing us live. Yeah, he doesn't because he's only it ruins because it ruins the illusion. Because then he's like, "Fuck, these bitches aren't funny." On yeah, stage. he's like, "Oh, they ain't shit." But yeah. guess what? <laughs> Fucking ours. So fuck you. Um, no, <laughs> but, just kidding. Uh, that I saw that first clown cast you did really well. I saw you do really well there. Oh my god, you were there. Yeah, I that was there. fun. Okay, yeah. so enough about boring stand up. Do you want to close with this last story? Um, and then move over to our Patreon. Yeah, you guys move over to our Patreon. It's actually really cute. Because you guys, we've got a lot of stories left. And I know, so many and fucking stories. And I want stories. you guys to hear your own stories. Please keep this anonymous. Always do, honey. Always. I lost my lesbian virginity at 13 with another girl. But when I was 15, I lost my virginity to a man who was 25, thanks to court-ordered AA meetings. Yeah. <laughs> After the meeting, we left and had sex behind somebody's house. Oh. I was doing it to rebel against my parents and my PO. I hated my life. That asshole was really an asshole. Ha 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 And eventually got me so drunk one night, he and his friend, who was 30, had sex with my drunk 15-year-old ass at a hot tub. Fuck them. I'm not the first or last this Ugh. has happened to with them. As an adult, I did meth for four years straight. And now I'm five years clean. Yay, go I, off. I love the show. I listen to y'all while I weld. That's my job. And sometimes you guys fuck up my weld because I'm laughing so hard. So thank you. That's that was cute. Was that that's it? Cute. Yeah, that's cute. Cute. Okay, we love... Uh, congratulations on your sobriety. Congratulations. I am so sorry about that trauma. I hope you go to therapy or have maybe just, you know, dabbled in that after those little experiences. But... Welding seems cool. Yeah. Send, us, send us some pictures of your welding. Please. We love a woman of trade. That is so painfully true. Fuck. We love a woman I'm of glad, a trade. Glad Any you trade. switched uh, meth for welding. For welding. Yeah. Yeah. That seems like a way more fun vice. And, and uh, being a rebellious teenager is fun too. Yeah. I honestly can't imagine being addicted to crystal meth. It would be a nightmare and so hard to quit. So, but also kind of hot. <laughs> eh, I don't know about that. You get kind of scabby. I would say meth is probably the Wait, least Wait, doesn't hot. meth always make you scabby? Uh, if Not you do always. it long enough. It just, that works. You got to do it for like years for it yeah. to start. Well, so. Well, don't you like scratch it, yourself? You, you, it, just get yeah. ups, you just get these ticks basically that turn, that like you kind of will like scratch one place until it gets wrong. Yeah. God, I listened to this morning right when I woke up. I was on TikTok and I listened to like a four part thing on the 911 call from Mac Miller's uh, personal assistant when he found him dead. Mm -hmm. And then they they posted like all the tr tra transcriptions? Transcripts. Transcripts between uh, Mac and his dealers in his like last fucking day of being alive. So dark. Fuck. I just thought of, you know, just thinking about math made me think of all the shit that uh, Mac Miller did before he died. Mm -hmm. Anyway, RIP, it's really sad. And addiction is a nightmare. Anyway, that's been our episode, huh? Cute and light and sweet and cute and sweet. Okay, tell a friend. Tell, oh my God, tell the person you lost your virginity to listen to this podcast. Yeah, I'm coming yeah. for you, Scotty. And I hope y'all fucking get your pockets up and get on this Patreon because honestly, it's fucking cute as shit. Subscribe for Harper's birthday. Give her a birthday present. That's the best thing you can do for her birthday. Yeah, um, virtually honk my tits by subscribing to Patreon. And um, if you're in the LA area, you can see Honky and I April 2nd at the Yard Theater. And if you're sober, we're going to have cute treats there. But if you are if you have a problem and you want to continue it, then there's going to be open bar and free weed. <laughs> Leo, are you going to come? Yeah. I'll okay, fuck yeah. So come oh, oh, meet. So you don't want to keep it separate now? No, actually. Yeah, oh, actually, wait, I don't want to keep it separate now. Lee, actually, I need to pay you because I need you to film my set. Okay, bye. Oh, my God. Okay, we love you. Bye. Subscribe to Patreon. See you there. Yeah.